Today's integral is pretty fascinating. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of an infinite power tower. That is, we have x to the 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 x, and so on and so forth. And the strategy for evaluating this integral rests on a simplification of the integrand. So what we're going to do here is we're going to let x to the 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 x and so on and so forth equal to some other variable called it y. And of course we're going to call our integral here i for reference purposes. Anyway, so notice one thing that if we just uh, cover up this first x to the x term and shift our focus on the exponents, then what we have here is the same infinite power tower that we're calling y. So this implies that we can write the above equation as x to the x to the y equal to y. And this does look pretty cool, but it's not enough. What we need is an explicit structure for y in terms of x that we can just plug back into our integral and evaluate it. So for that, let's make use of logarithms because logarithms are pretty handy when it comes to exponents. And using the properties of the logarithm, this y exponent can be written as a coefficient. So you have y times log x to the x being equal to y, uh, y that is, sorry, log y. We have it equal to log y. And we can expand y here as e to the log y because the exponential and the logarithm are just inverse functions of each other, so they cancel out. So we have e to the log y times log x to the x being equal to log y. And expanding using e to the negative log y gives us a nicer equation because you have all the y's on one side and the x's on the other. So the exponential functions cancel out and on the left hand side we have e to the negative log y times log y being equal to log x to the x which of course can be written as x times log x. And now I want to introduce a couple of negative signs, one for each side of the equation. And I'm going to write the left-hand side here as e to the negative log y times negative log y. And the reason for that is I want to invoke the wonderful Lambert w function. This is actually the first time I'm going to invoke the Lambert function, the first time I'm going to call the ghost of Lambert here on the channel. So Lambert and his function deserve a bit of an introduction and it'll be useful for those of you who are not familiar with the Lambert W function. So Lambert is dead and his function, the Lambert W function, is defined as the inverse of another function defined as f of x equal to x times e to the x. So the Lambert W function, W of x, is defined as the inverse of this function. Okay. So that means if you apply f to W x, then you just get x. And by the same token, if you apply W to f of x, then you get x. And if you expand the left-hand sides of both of these equations, you get a couple of nice relations that are going to be, uh, that are going to come in handy for us for our solution development. So f of w replace x by w in the structure, then you get w of x times e to the w of x equal to x. And for this equation here, we have w of x times e to the x equal to x. And it's the second equation here that makes clear exactly why I introduced those two negative signs. So applying the Lambert w function to our equation in yellow, means that we have, uh, let me just zoom out. Okay, so w of e to the negative log y times negative log y equals w of negative x times log x. So the left-hand side is exactly this left-hand side, the left-hand side of this equation in purple, with x being replaced by negative log y. So this implies that negative log y equals Lambert w negative x times log x. And let me just pop this negative sign to the other side. So we have an explicit solution for log y in terms of x, but we can go one better by exponentiating because the exponential function and the logarithm are inverses, they cancel out. And we have y being equal to e to the negative Lambert w negative x log x. 
And what to do with the exponential of the Lambert W function? Well, for that, refer to this other equation. So we have W of x times e to the W of x equal to x. So this implies that e to the W of x equals x divided by W of x. So taking reciprocals means that we have y being equal to Lambert W replacing x by this negative x log x term and dividing it all by a negative x log x. Okay, cool. There you have it. That's your explicit form for y in terms of x. And all that's left is to plug it back into our integral and integrate. So here's our integral i again, and we equated the integrand with another variable y that's sorted out to this really cool structure. So this implies that i equals the integral from 0 to 1, the negative of the integral, that is, of Lambert w, negative x log x, divided by x times log x, integration with respect to x. So we got exactly what we wished for. We wanted to get rid of the infinite power tower, and here we are. But how on earth do you integrate the Lambert W function? Well, fear not. Your boy here is pretty good with the ladies, and he's even better with infinite series expansions. And the Lambert W function has a pretty gnarly infinite series expansion. So W of Z equals the sum over the positive integers n of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times n to the n minus 2 times z to the n divided by gamma n. So yeah, that is one hell of a structure. And we have to replace z here by negative x log x. So this implies that i equals the negative of the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 by x log x times the sum over n of negative 1 to the n times uh, n minus 1 times n to the n minus 2 times negative x to the negative x times log x to the n. So you have a negative 1 to the n in there as well. So you have negative 1 to the n times x to the n times log to the n of x, all divided by gamma n. Whoa. Anyway, so let's deal with these negative 1 terms. Because you have negative 1 to the n minus 1 times negative 1 to the n, so add, uh, the exponents add up when you multiply them. So you'll have negative 1 to the 2n minus 1, and 2n minus 1 is an odd integer. So negative 1 to the odd integer, negative 1, and the two negative signs cancel out pretty well. So you have the integral from 0 to 1, and we have 1 by x times log x, which is independent of the n variable with respect to which you're performing the summation. So just slip this inside the summation operator and we have the sum over n of uh, n to the n minus 2 times x to the n minus 1 times log to the n minus 1 of x divided by gamma n integration with respect to x. Next up, switch up the order of the summation and the integration operators and you have the, uh, the sum over the positive integers n of the integrals from 0 to 1 of n to the n minus 2 divided by gamma n, which is independent of the x variable with respect to which we're integrating. So just pop this outside the integration operator and we're left with x to the n minus 1 times log to the n minus 1 x dx. And this integral here has a really nice reduction formula. So I'll prove that in a future video. I haven't proved it on the channel yet, but it's a really nice reduction formula that sorts out to negative one to the n minus one times gamma n divided by n to the n. So this implies that i equals the sum over the positive integers n of n to the n minus two divided by gamma n times all of this stuff here, which means that the gamma n's cancel out pretty nicely and the simplification of the n terms is pretty easy as well. We have negative 1 to the n minus 1 divided by n to the n times n to the 2 minus n. So this can be broken down into n squared and n to the negative n, which cancels out with n to the n. And we have the sum over n 
of negative 1 to the n minus 1 divided by n squared, which we recognize as the Dirichlet eta function. Oh, sorry about that. The Dirichlet eta function evaluated at 1. And that is still not a nice way to write the eta function. Ah, much better. So we have Dirichlet eta 1, which sorts out quite nicely to pi squared by 12. And that concludes our solution development. An incredible solution development to one hell of an integral, and I really hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.